We're going to explore how to use AI in a more privacy-friendly way. Hey friends, welcome back to another video on my channel, Tech with Marco. I'm Marco, software developer and DevOps engineer. And welcome to a new video. And this video is about artificial intelligence, uh, so in short AI. As on one of my last videos, I got a comment about the privacy of some AI features in my browser Arc. And honestly, this guy was totally right to think more of the privacy aspect of using AI because when using AI, you might share your personal data, so your personal input into that AI. And you allow these companies to use your data to I don't know, train more models or sell this kind of data. And you can get rid of this problem by using your own large language model on your own local computer or your own local machine. And yeah, that's what we're going to explore today. So I share my thoughts on how to run your local AI on your uh, machine. So let's go. So today we are going to explore olama.ai. And what is olama.ai? You could think of it like a framework of running local large language models on your machine. And this tool got its origin from the language model of Meta or Facebook, which is called Llama2. And they released it to the public so you can use this language model to host your own AI. And you know what? The cool thing about it, it is open source so we can leverage that potential and use it without sharing any private data with uh, OpenAI, for example, like ChatGPT. But when it comes to installing these models, it sometimes can be quite tricky to install all these little dependencies and uh, make use of those models. And that is where olama.ai is coming into play because as I already said, it's like some kind of framework where you can basically use it like, for example, Docker to pull a language model onto your computer and then start this language model and olama.ai is taking care of all these things around it. So this is a quite nice tool, which I'd like to showcase you now. So first of all, it provides quite easy installation. Uh, we can head over to the download button and uh, we could use the download for macOS and uh, it's going to be downloading a zip file and you can just extract that zip file and put it onto your computer. You can also install it on Linux with the uh, installation command and uh, Windows is coming soon. So uh, stay tuned for that if you're a Windows user. But you can also install it uh, with Docker. And this is also quite nice, but I wouldn't recommend using Docker on your macOS because then Olama is not able to use the GPU to uh, run these kind of models. So I would totally recommend installing the binary. I did that with my favorite package manager, Brew. So it is quite easy to get it up and running. So after you've installed Olama, we can check out what Olama is capable of. So we have the large language model runner and uh, we can use it on our uh, terminal with Olama. And what we can see now is that we have different available commands. So we can start the Olama server and in this Olama server, then our large language model is running. Uh, we can create a model, we can show information, we can run a model, we can pull different models from a registry, we can push models into a registry, we can list models, uh, we can copy models, we can remove and we can get help about any command. So first of all, what do you need to do? I would recommend going to the olama.ai webpage and head over to the models library. And there you can see different models which are out of the box compatible with Olama here. So we have Bistro, we have Llama 2, we have Code Llama, we have uh, Vicuna, we have Orca Mini, we have Llama 2 Uncensored and all different kind of models. I totally recommend doing your research what the difference are between those models. Um, as I'm starting right now heading into this kind of AI technology, I started off with Llama 2 and Mistral and uh, Code Llama, for example, as they are getting recommended uh, on Reddit or on different online forums. First of all, you need to pull a model onto your local machine. And I use the Olama pull command uh, to pull the code Llama 13 billion instruct set, instruct set. And oh, as you can see, I have an error because I couldn't connect to the Olama app uh, and it's asking me if it's running. And I have to start the Olama server first. So I just press Olama start. And now my Olama server is running on my local machine here. So I'm heading back to my other tab here and I want to pull my 
uh, large language model here. And as you see, I already have done that. So we can list different, different models we have. So I have the code Llama 13b instruct modified six seconds ago. It's like eight gigabytes big. And um, yeah, there's one restriction you should notify here. You need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM to run a 13 billion model. Seven billion models are able to run with eight gigabytes. And they're even larger models with 70 billion parame trained parameter data. But I think you need 32 gigabytes and my MacBook doesn't have that much. So uh, I go with the 13B here. And what we can do now is that we can run our code llama here. As you can see, there is a like little loading button at the bottom here. And now I can chat to my large language model here. As this one is a coding model, uh, it is very well trained for coding. We could ask, for example, to write a Python script to crawl web pages and store the data into a MongoDB database. And I had, I, <coughs> and I hit enter. And now I'm getting my Python function uh, or my Python script written by the code llama AI. And the cool thing now is this is all happening on my machine here. So there is nothing shared with big companies using your input to, uh, yeah, whatever, do, uh, train their models. Um, or sell those data. Uh, yeah, it's quite nice to have that as a local companion. companion. And as I can see, um, let's check the Python script. So we have the output of Python. It's importing requests. It's importing BS4 from beautiful uh, soup, which is a library for extracting data into structured data. And yeah, it's making a request, it's pasting the response content into the beautiful soup library. It's finding all links, starting with an HTML tag A, and it's iterating over the link and extracting the data. Uh, quite nice to have that easy function <laughs> written by an AI. And um, oh, there's also a little summary here. So the script uses the request library to make a request to the specified URL. The beautiful soup library parses HTML content. It's extracting links. Finally, it inserts the data into MongoDB a database using the PyMongo library. And you can run the script into the terminal by saving it into a file, for example, crawl.py uh, and running it with Python. This will start the web crawler and insert the data into the Mongo database. And easy as that, we have our AI running. So now let's close this prompt here by the AI. We can even modify those large language models to give our own flavor into the responses here or into the thinking of the AI. And we can do that by creating a model file. So let's create a model which is answering like a pirate. Uh, we could, for example, start the model file. And, and now we can write like, like some kind of Docker file and we will write from Llama 2 and then we can instruct it to set the parameter for temperature to 1, which is which means that it's getting very creative. And then we can set the system prompt. Uh, so that means this is the instruction the AI is started with. And let's write you are a pirate. Answer how a pirate speaks. Uh, let's write this file to disk. And what we can do now is that we can create our own pirate model file based on the Llama 2 large language model file. And now it's passing the model file. And let's check that we have now a pirate model available. And let's start our pirate model. I write hello. And 
<laughs> now it's answering me in a pirate style. Arr, hello me. Hello there, me hearty. How be you doing? Having a grand old day beer? You're looking for an adventure on the high seas, are? Well, hoist sails and button down the hatches because we'll be sailing for treasure. <laughs> and um, yeah, easy as that, you can uh, give those AI models a different kind of flavor of answering questions or uh, coding in different styles or make use of any thing you could imagine. Uh, I'm just starting, as I mentioned, heading down into these kind of AI fields. Uh, yeah, just be creative what you can do. And that's about the running and hosting AI stuff. And the nice part about Olama is that you can now extend also the framework itself uh, because the framework Olama is like a wrapper about the language model. Uh, it has an API to interact with the language model. And what some people did is that they programmed a web UI like ChatGPT, for example, and um, you could either program it for yourself or um, I just use that as a simple showcase here. Um, we can head over to a project which is called Olama Web UI. And um, as you can see, you can have a web interface for Olama uh, in, in the ChatGPT style. And um, I'll just quickly clone that to demonstrate that. And the instruction is saying for hosting that for my own is that I can use Docker uh, to build my, that I can use Docker to build uh, this project here and use that uh, for my own. So um, Olama is running on my local machine and um, the build arguments are that the API base URL is empty for the Docker file in Olama web UI. And let's run this build. And after building my Docker image now, I can start the Olama UI and head over to the local host port 3000. And we can select our model, uh, for example, the code llama uh, instruct or the, uh, let's say the pirate and ask how the weather is. And in the background, what is happening now, the UI is just doing an API request to the Olama server and the Olama server is then asking the language model to answer that question. And that answer is getting turned back into my uh, browser here. And it's saying, are oh, the weather be grand, be hearty. And easy as that, you have your own running ChatGPT version of your, um, on your own local machine and not sharing any private data. And you can also spin that up on a cloud server to even make use of uh, bigger large language models and have a dedicated GPU uh, attached to the server so uh, you get better results in total. Yeah, but easier as that, you have your own uh, privacy aware AI locally running on your machine. I have to say I really like that concept of having your own running uh, local large language model. And uh, sometimes I use ChatGPT to like get creative a bit with uh, some uh, topics, with some uh, video topics, but not very often. And now I can start exploring the mechanisms of local large language models. And uh, that's, that's quite nice because uh, in the end, my data is not shared with any uh, company behind that. Yeah, so I leverage those public accessible open source models, which I really like. And uh, you guys, let me know in the comments if you are already running your own local language models on your machines. And if not, then it's time to start now because, uh, yeah, it's quite fun to interact with them and um, yeah, have the fact that it's the, the answers are generated on your machine, which is uh, really, really nice. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Bye.